This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Bombas. So let's say as a kid, you get really into butterflies. I mean, they're very fascinating insects. Mm -hmm. They start off as a caterpillar, and when they're fully grown, they go ahead and just morph into something completely different, a beautiful butterfly, in a process that's still not fully understood. It's literal magic that it's, you get to enjoy. It's very cool. Yes. And let's say your fascination with these creatures continues into adulthood, and you end up even going so far as to getting a postgraduate degree in entomology with a focus on lepidopterology, the study of butterflies. That's After, a fun name. Uh, yeah. After that, maybe you get a job pursuing your passion at the National Butterfly Center, a nature preserve at the southern tip of Texas, dedicated to preserving the 340 species of butterflies found in the Rio Grande Valley. And imagine that then a bunch of brain-dead lunatics convince themselves that what you're actually doing at that butterfly sanctuary is human sex trafficking for the Illuminati, and you must be stopped at all costs. They targeted butterfly specialists. Yeah. So yeah, that's a weird twist on an otherwise unremarkable story, but it's apparently exactly what's happening. Because the QAnon weirdos in Texas, they aren't just sitting around waiting for John F. Kennedy uh, to return. Some of them are also trying to liberate non-existent illegal immigrant sex slaves from a butterfly sanctuary. Uh, they had to have something to do while they were all there. Well, we're here. Yeah. JFK and JFK Jr. Uh, haven't, they haven't shown themselves yet. They're waiting. Uh, what they want us to do in the meantime, though, is attack this butterfly sanctuary. This is what JFK would want. Texas is a big state. Everything's bigger in Texas, including the conspiracies. Yeah, so if you have, if you have to go any distance for any uh, harebrained scheme, you're going to really want to stay there and uh, see it through because you've driven just an enormous amount of time. Yeah, you're going to be hitting a lot of Waffle Houses. Yeah. Uh, here's the Houston Chronicle. The National Butterfly Center on the Texas border is closing for the immediate future after conspiracy-fueled attacks against the center on social media escalated in recent days. The Butterfly Sanctuary, part of the North American Butterfly Association, oh, the NABA? <laughs> NABA. <laughs> That's a little close to NAMBLA. I don't know. They should look into this. It's us. Uh, they made the announcement Wednesday. The decision came just days after GOP operatives descended on the site, reviving baseless and false conspiracy theories linking the center to sex trafficking. The center's leaders fear the renewed focus on the nature preserve could lead to violence, as similar online harassment directed at a Washington, D.C. pizzeria in 2016 led a man to fire a rifle inside the restaurant. Everyone remembers, was it Comet Pizza? Yeah. yeah. Things were so quaint back then. Like, so oh, simple. This, this pizza gate thing is dumb as hell. Yeah, there's not even a basement there. But hey, at least it's this uh, pizza gate thing isn't going to develop into an all-encompassing theory of everything when it comes to conspiracies that will rot the brains of like 25% of the country's population mm -hmm. forever and just tear families apart. At least that won't happen. <laughs> that would be insane. Anyway, yeah, that article said GOP operatives because the you know, line between QAnon and the Republican Party kind of ceased to exist the, the, a long um, time The ago. rise of Marjorie Taylor Greene's status in the party kind of dictates... Yeah. Uh, these, these are their people now, yeah. and they've got support within the party, whether that's tacit support or just uh, explicit, often at the local level. Uh, more explicitly in recent uh, months, uh, it seems yeah. to be, uh, instead of being a wink and a nod, it is a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the incident that led to the Butterfly Center's closure involved a Republican congressional candidate and an associate of hers who were confronted by the Butterfly Center's executive director, Marianne Wright, and her son, Nicholas, when they were found trespassing. Uh, one woman identified herself as Kimberly Lowe, Virginia candidate for Congress, and the other identified herself as Michelle and claimed to work for the U.S. Secret Service. Mm. They were broadcasting live to Lowe's Facebook, and in the broadcast, they claimed to be armed. Uh, so here's the Daily Beast with a play-by-play -play of what happened next. In her affidavit, Wright said that she approached Lowe and Michelle and informed them that they were trespassing on private property. An audio recording shared with the Daily Beast reveals some of the confrontation. You are here to promote your agenda, and your agenda is not welcome here, Wright says on the recording. You're not for keeping the illegals out, Michelle counters. So you're not for helping all these poor people in the humanitarian crisis, Lowe adds. You're okay with children being sex trafficked and raped and murdered? When Wright asks the pair to leave, Michelle claims that Border Patrol told them that they could enter the property and that, quote, I'm federal, I work for Secret Service, so nothing is off limit for me. As Wright laughs at Michelle's claim, Lowe appears to begin narrating a video. So we're here with a woman who's not a very nice person, who's okay with that children, and then audio cuts out as Wright swats or takes Lowe's phone. You did not take my fucking phone, Lowe says. That continues, in her affidavit, Wright said that Lowe had her phone up and appeared to be filming me. 
given Bannon, Colfidge, the neo-Nazi, Hardy Lloyd, and their various outlets have published and broadcast images of me along with threats to the center, me and my children, I panicked. I moved to stop her from doing this by knocking or taking away her phone and retreating inside the building to wait for the police. According to Wright's affidavit and the audio record, someone shoved her to the ground. Get the fuck down, bitch, one of the visiting women is heard shouting. A scuffle ensues, after which Wright accuses the woman of taking her phone and refusing to return it. The women leave as another Butterfly Center worker says to call 911. In Lowe's now-deleted Facebook Live video, reviewed by the Daily Beast, Lowe and Michelle return to their car, where Michelle claimed to have Wright's phone. In her affidavit, Wright said her son went to close the center's gate to prevent the pair from driving off with the device. She says Lowe nearly hit her son while accelerating towards the gate. In her deleted video, Lowe appears to drive towards someone, presumably Wright's son. Quote, Get the fuck out of my way, the congressional candidate says. Get out of my fucking way. Get the fuck out of my way. Jesus Christ. These people just want to study butterflies and save them. That's what's so... That, so I saw this, this headline ruining, floating around. Perfectly good thing. And that that's the thing is it's like... Not that it's any better at the pizza place that it happened. And that escalated to a point where it, like actual real violence was happening too. So it's not to, not to uh, like, you know, say that isn't something. But like... The fact that it's at a fucking butterfly sanctuary yeah, at least with really like, heightens the ridiculousness. Like, if this was a, a fiction novel, it would be like, ugh. That doesn't uh, make any fucking yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah, at least with restaurants, it's like, they do deal with assholes yeah. on a really regular basis. So, a guy with a gun, that is certainly an escalation, but it it's along the same sort of... Uh, Thing but like with, with a butterfly center, it's like the last fucking place you'd expect you would, yeah. to. Well, have that's your, what that's exactly why. Life in danger. Yeah, that's, that's what they want you to think. Yeah, exactly. Ha <laughs> ha. They didn't think that uh, we'd notice the butterfly center because everyone What's just thinks, oh, butterflies. I'm gonna. I got an idea. Like obviously, these people are hiding in plain sight. These human traffickers, and you would assume, like, put your mind in the head of a, uh, put yourself in the head of a human trafficker. You'd want to do the most harmless business possible. So what's the most harmless business that we can find in Texas near the border? Oh, well, there's a butterfly sanctuary right here. Yeah. That, what, uh, who would ever have a butterfly sanctuary for anything other than uh, trafficking things or doing something that's illegal? Nobody likes butterflies that much. Come on. <laughs> and also, oh, you need a sanctuary for butterflies in the desert? I submit Exhibit A, the 1999 song by Crazy Town, Butterfly. Yeah. Now you'll notice he says, "Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, come across the border, maybe." Yeah. You're my butterfly, sugar baby, a sugar baby like a prostitute. Yeah. Crazy. It's all there. It's crazy all been, town. It's all. Yep. Yeah, yep. Crazy town. More like Washington D.C. is the crazy town. Uh huh. It's all they, been right there in front. When they of say them. sugar baby. They're talking about booger sugar. It's all right there. It's in plain all sight. Right there. Yes. Big brain trust working here. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that happened on uh, January 21st, and with an upcoming rally taking place nearby featuring Q-friendly speakers like Michael Flynn and a plan for a caravan to the border, the Bur Butterfly Center decided to just close down indefinitely to try and avoid a comet pizza situation well, imagine, of their own. Imagine being Michael Flynn and your legacy... Yeah, his is, whole story is fucking wild. Like, yeah, he, he your did, legacy is now like a conspiracy theory weirdo, and like... Look, I, I don't agree with the guy at all, but, like, served in the military, got a government job, and he then... He was in charge yeah. of a, a lot of troops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, he, yeah, it's weird. Like, he, I mean, he lost his job at the White House in disgrace. Yes. Uh, but he could have just disappeared, and yeah. people would have fucking forgotten about it. There was, like, hundreds of fucking weirdos that were in the Trump administration at some point and left at, at another point. But he decided... To just fully embrace the most crackpot weirdos in the Trump movement. Yeah. And latch on to them. And he's still at it. Yeah. It's wild. But uh, yeah, so that, that rally uh, that they were worried about at the Butterfly Center, it, it, was, it was titled, We Stand America. I should have said, We Stand America. Yeah, but, with an apostrophe between the N and D. Yeah, We Stand America, and uh, it already happened, and it sounds like it was kind of a bust. Uh, local outlet valleycentral.com reported, the rally began with one speaker stating she thought it would have been a packed stadium. There were less than 100 supporters Oof. in attendance, but accused Democrats of hacking their system and stealing 600 military tickets. The media was also accused of spreading the message that this event was canceled. Ted Nugent, a musician and activist, added, the reason why there are so few people here are because the powers that be hate freedom. They hate America. They hate you. They really hate me, which proves I'm really good. Also, I just crap my pants. I can't believe Ted Nugent could only draw, you would assume that he would draw a little bit more than that. 
Yeah, it's, he did uh, write Cat Scratch Fever. I mean, the this part of Texas is like not. It's kind of out of the way. Yeah, yeah. like there, you know, all the Houston, Dallas, Austin, pretty central. Yeah. So a whole lot of uh, nothing in the rest of the state. Still very funny that uh, no one came. Yeah. Still, though, even just a hundred Q psychos showing up at the National Butterfly Center in a caravan could have ended very badly. So it was probably good that the Butterfly Center shuttered its doors. Uh, although it's very sad to hear about a Butterfly Center shutting its doors. I just, I just want to save the butterflies. Uh, imagine, like, I didn't sign up for this. Like the the like beginning of this journey in this uh, Butterfly Sanctuary worker's life was like. Uh, as a child playing in a field yeah. and like a butterfly landed on her finger and it was like that was the moment when she knew she was going to study, save, analyze and do everything she could dedicate her life to these beautiful creatures these mysterious beautiful creatures and then like fast forward 30 years and you have a bunch of crazy conspiracy theory people claiming that you're a human trafficker while you're just trying to be like hey look why'd they migrate this way this uh, this year these butterflies my life studying butterflies, much like the butterfly itself, has metamorphosized into something completely different than before. Yeah. And I'm not a fan. It's just absurd. Bad writing. But yeah, uh, yeah you may be wondering just why the hell these people got, in, got it in their heads that a butterfly sanctuary was involved in a globalist Illuminati New World Order plot to traffic child sex slaves. And the answer is, of course, that someone just made it up. It seems to all stem from Trump's border wall, which was originally supposed to cut right through the butterfly sanctuary and leave 70% of it on the Mexico side of the wall. Because as we all know, Trump hates butterflies. They're the worst. <laughs> uh, environmentalists of all stripes, of course, took serious issue with this plan and the Butterfly Center sued to stop it. It seems pretty straightforward if you ask us, but conspiracy theorists surmise that clearly the Butterfly Center was opposing the wall because it would stop them from secretly transporting child sex slaves across the Rio Grande. And the, uh, the Butterfly Center has been dealing with harassment ever since. Which I, has I presumably ruined their lives. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fucking insane. And I, like, you have a similar thing. I, I, I haven't heard anything about it, but like they, another one of their crackpot beliefs is that the the Getty Center in L.A. is uh, on, you know, it's on a hill. Mm -hmm. Getty Center. If you're ever in L.A., you want a, just a lovely Beautiful. day with a great view of the city. Uh, it's it's like a museum that was donated by J. Paul Getty, who had a crazy amount of money. But uh, it's on top of a hill, and they believe that there are secret, like, uh, caverns underneath. And there's, like, mole people, which are, like, kidnapped children living under there. Secret tunnels, I could believe. But, yeah, I mean, uh, there probably are. That's some rich guy shit. But that's, they, uh, the Playboy Mansion had it, right? That went down to the strip? The Playboy Mansion had tunnels like uh, Jack Nicholson and Warren Beatty, yeah. I believe, lived next door. And they're like, I'm tired of leaving my house and having to put on shoes. Yeah. Can I just come in yeah. <laughs> through the bottom? But um, yeah, so I, I'm definitely curious if the, the security at the Getty Center has to deal with uh, this kind of bullshit at all. Luckily, the Getty Center, well, I guess this... Butterfly They're well-funded. They have good The security. Butterfly Sanctuary is also out of the way, but the Getty Center is... It's not out of the way, but it is annoying to get to. Yeah, that it's that uh, that 405 grapevine right there. <laughs> it's right there Especially in the middle of Especially if it. there's a fire anywhere nearby. Oh, but enough you're... local talk. <laughs> anyway. Uh, also, yeah, uh, so Brian Colfage, or Colfage, the build the wall guy that we haven't really talked about in a long time, who tried to literally crowdfund... <laughs> The border wall? How hard could it be? Uh, uh, he's one of the key people driving all this harassment. Uh, here's the Daily Dot with more on that. Colfidge, who has called the center's employees butterfly freaks, <laughs> running a sham sanctuary devoted to profiting off human misery, has pushed the theories hard, including sharing doctored photos of rafts at a dock outside the Butterfly Center. He's also spammed right with violent threats over Twitter, eventually resulting in his account being suspended. Colfidge himself is not speaking at the event, presumably because he's currently under indictment for wire fraud and tax evasion due to allegedly stealing from the Build the Wall nonprofit that he founded. Remember that? Yeah. It's like, we're going to crowdfund the wall. Well, I mean, I'm doing all this work. You know. Wasn't well, Steve Gannon yeah, wrapped up in that, too? He is as well. Yeah. Also, like, not for nothing, this the there's actual investigations taking place with actual government officials in Florida right now about this exact issue with verifiable proof that it uh, probably happened. Yeah. But uh, no, let's, uh, let's go. What do they call There's them? literally an elected They're... official accused, yeah. credibly, of sex trafficking. Yeah. And what's that? Crickets? Yeah. 
these butterfly scam artists are the, really the, uh, the issue here. No one loves butterflies that much. It's very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that initial temporary closure during the rally nearby didn't stop plenty of weirdos from showing up outside the Butterfly Center's gates and filming selfie videos about how they're trying to save the children or whatever. So the Butterfly Center is now closed indefinitely because of the credible danger that its employees find themselves in. Imagine trying to explain this to a little kid who just wants to see some cool butterflies. And, and has no idea that this place is a target yeah. of QAnon people. No, Timmy, we can't go to the Butterfly Center because we might get murdered. These people are fucking monsters. They're also just part of uh, Amer an America that we're going to have to get used to. And uh, they clearly aren't going anyway, anywhere anytime soon. So uh, I say we just tell them that uh, there's a lot of human trafficking going on at Area 51. Just run straight towards it. Yes. They, if you put your arms behind your, your your body, you run faster. Actually. Exactly. We need to pivot that initial uh, like viral moment of storming the gates of Area 51 into a believable. Like it doesn't have to be believable at this point, but just a conspiracy theory about like that's where Hillary Clinton stores all of her sex slaves. Yeah. And uh, all of her emails, they're literally they they went there and they just went like this and threw them. Yeah. So you can go in there on the ground. Yeah, you can go find them. Yeah. So. I think that's probably a cool place to start looking. Not physically cool, because it's very hot there. Well, at night, it's that high well, desert. Yeah, it, it, it's wintertime right now. It's yeah. pretty chilly. Bring a jacket. Plan for extreme weather. Anytime <laughs> you're in the state of Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay, enough about the extremists in our country. Let's check in on how things are going for the Taliban over in Afghanistan. So regardless of what you think of the Taliban, uh, you got to admit that these guys, they've had a hell of a run. And most of these guys went from living out in the middle of nowhere to rolling up on their nation's capital and driving out both the U.S. military and the Afghan government in the span of just a couple months. It's got to be wild. Mm -hmm. And most of them were seeing Kabul for the first time in their lives. And once the fighting was over, they took in the sights and attractions that the big city had to offer, like going out in paddle boats or heading down to the local amusement park for a little bit of bumper cars. Not a cell phone in sight, just people <laughs> living in the moment, just vibing. Just vibing. Well, it sounds like uh, the odd juxtaposition of seeing fully armed Taliban fighters enjoying themselves down at the local fun fair is sadly now a thing of the past. Here's Reuters. Taliban fighters will no longer be allowed to carry their weapons in amusement parks in Afghanistan, the group's spokesman said on Wednesday in what appeared to be another effort by the country's new rulers to soften their image. <laughs> Taliban fighters, many of whom have spent most of their lives in a 20-year insurgency against a U.S.-backed government, flocked to amusement parks in Afghan cities and towns after they took over in August. Mujahideen of Islamic Emirate are not allowed to enter amusement parks with weapons, military uniforms, and vehicles. The main Taliban spokesman, Zabahullah Mujahid, said on Twitter, they are obliged to abide by all the rules and regulations of amusement parks. Man, this Taliban shit just got a whole lot less fun. I know! Boring. I mean, that was the whole cool thing, right? Yeah. You get to ride around the bumper cars with your gun. Yeah. Yeah. It was what if there was a bad person with a gun there? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, this has got to be very disappointing to the Taliban fighters who clearly have taken a liking to riding carnival rides while strapped with an AK-47. Or, <laughs> in more recent photos, what appears to be leftover U.S. weaponry. A lot of long, black, uh, M16-style, yeah. uh, M4-style weapons. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Yes. So, I mean, like, like, come on, we are the government. We, the Taliban, we run this shit. Why don't we just change the law to make it so that we can bring guns to the amusement Because it's party? a PR nightmare. What about the Second Amendment? <laughs> Do the words shall not infringe mean anything anymore? I thought, well, I thought I lived in a country. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is probably for the best, considering your average Afghan probably uh, enjoys themselves more when armed men aren't just on the merry-go-round with them. No, that you, you should feel too. safer. Yeah, that's based good, on all the marketing that's that I've seen. That's a good guy with a gun. Yeah, it's a real shame. That's why now they all have to go get concealed carry permits. You just can't have it. Uh, you can't flaunt it. You know. Ah, oh, geez, they put up a gun-free zone sign at the entrance. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> they have an amnesty box at the front that's just yeah. filled with AKs. <laughs> uh, but speaking of things that the Taliban uh, are not allowed to do, it's time for some booze news. Booze news. Drinking. It can be a lot of fun, maybe even too much fun, and it can also ruin your entire fucking life if you happen to be predisposed to alcohol addiction. And not a lot is really understood about why certain people get so hooked on booze, but there is plenty of evidence of it being genetic and tied to mutations of a specific receptor in human cells. And some newly published research using alcohol-chugging monkeys shows that it might actually be possible to do something about that. 
Here's the Daily Beast. Nearly 15 million people in the U.S. alone have an alcohol use disorder, and about 95,000 people die every year from alcohol-related deaths, according to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. Most treatment options come in some form of counseling, although scientists have been trying to improve the efficacy of medications that could help make lifestyle changes stick more permanently. A new option that could emerge in the future is based on a hormone called FGF21, which has now been found to suppress alcohol consumption in monkeys. In a peer-reviewed study published in Cell Metabolism on Tuesday, a team of researchers found that a new analog compound of FGF21 given to alcohol-loving monkeys reduced booze intake by 50%. Quote, Using hormones as a therapeutic approach to treat substance use disorders is relatively novel, Kyle Flippo, a neuroscientist and pharmacologist at the University of Iowa, told the Daily Beast. Previous evidence showed that mutations in the receptor for FGF21 had led to increased alcohol consumption in humans across many different ethnic groups and populations around the world. But, quote, This is the first illustration that FGF21 analogs potentially reduce alcohol consumption in non-human primates, opening the door for a potentially new kind of treatment for alcoholism, Flippo said. And if you're worried about the poor monkeys that these scientists have turned into alcoholics for research purposes, uh, don't feel too bad. The specific monkeys used in the study are the green vervets from the island of St. Kitts in the Caribbean. And they're not actually a local species, but they were actually brought over as pets on, a, on slave ships in the 17th century. And for hundreds of years, they've demonstrated an affinity for alcohol that is bizarrely consistent with humans, down to the percentages of the monkeys' population who are heavy drinkers, social drinkers, and teetotalers. They've been studied for years because this behavior seems to prove a genetic predisposition to alcohol cons consumption among all primates, not just humans. They're also notorious for stealing people's drinks and being a big nuisance anywhere alcohol is being served. We've all seen the video. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, so this research is not only, it not only has great potential for us humans, but also for these drunk ass monkeys. Yeah, they've been on the sauce for hundreds of years. Yeah. And they need help, just as a lot of people need help. And also the tourism industry on St. Kitts, People love taking pictures of these monkeys stealing drinks, but it's bad for business. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Well, you, if you're a human, you get, have to buy another one. Yeah, well, mm. that's true. The monkeys are on payroll. Yeah, <laughs> they're uh, apparently it's like, so they're not native there. They should not be there. They're basically the rat of St. Kitts. They just go onto people's farms, mm -hmm. just eat everything, tearing up the crops. They're a big fucking nuisance. But the tourists, you know, they're like, yeah, that's funny. That monkey stole my cocktail. <laughs> But I'm on vacation in the Caribbean, so it was only like $5. I'm going to get another one. That's why you need an assault rifle, so you can take care of the 30 to 50 wild monkeys that are wreaking havoc on your farm. Like, monkeys, uh, yeah. If monkeys ever somehow got loose in the continental U.S., we would be in serious trouble. They are, I mean, hogs are dangerous, and apparently hogs on the run in... Uh, Northern California? Most of California, yeah. which is kind of new. Yeah. Uh, but uh, monkeys, I mean, you see Logan Paul... He's got a monkey? He was in South Africa recently. Mm -hmm. The monkey almost stole his camera. He got, like, attacked by some baboons. They were just going through all of his shit. Uh, oh, no. It, it was pretty scary. These monkeys, they don't, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, I went to, like, some monkey thing in Bali. I don't know how ethical it was, but I was there on vacation anyway, and it was, like, a sanctuary where they, had, they were all running free. Yeah. And, yeah, they'd come right up to you and, like, try to... Take stuff from no you. No sense of personal space. You gotta monkeys. hold, you put all your stuff in your front pockets. Yeah, they're always reaching in. Uh, it's like if you yeah, yeah. reach. It's like going to a music festival. Keep yeah. your wallet and your phone in your front pocket. Yeah. And uh, always be on the guard. I mean, they, don't they straight up train monkeys in some places to pickpocket people? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine monkeys on the streets of any U.S. city. It'd be fucking bedlam. It was a beautiful sanctuary and it wasn't a zoo. It was very open. Um, but whatever. It was. It was interesting. Monkeys are cool looking. I go to the zoo here in Los Angeles and hang out with them. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah monkeys are great. They told me not to come back. They say I come too much. You come too much. The monkey has taken a liking to you. He's, yeah. not, he's not talking to any of his friends anymore. So you got to go. Sorry, sir. I hate when they don't look at me. They're just sitting there and I'm like, hey. Hey, I'm fascinated by you. What? You think you're hot shit? Yeah. Look at me. We're like 98% genetically identical. <laughs> Isn't that fucking wild? You're just staring off into the distance. I'm right here. I could do a little dance for you. <laughs> They're very content. They are. Just staring off. I, I Especially after their, a few. <laughs> <laughs> I envy their, their calm demeanor. Yeah. Anyway, we've got the headlines half of the show coming up. But first, a word from this episode's sponsor, Bombas. Bombas. Bombas' mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So when you buy Bombas, you're also given to someone in need. 
Bombas designed their socks, shirts, and underwear to be the clothes that you can't wait to put on every day. Everything they make is soft, seamless, tagless, and has a luxuriously cozy feel. They're made from super soft materials like merino wool, pima cotton, and even cashmere. Ooh, cashmere! Which makes them the perfect cozy layers. There's a pair of Bomba socks for everything you do. They come in tons of options like comfy performance styles for every sport and activity that keeps you moving. I, I got into Bomba socks uh, initially years ago because I had a problem where uh, if you wear ankle socks, sometimes that back part gets under your... It's annoying. And I was like running and stuff and it would always fall down and then you got to re... They, their socks don't allow for that. There's a little yeah. lip on it, so it never goes in there. But uh, then I got hooked on them, and uh, I like that uh, they send a pair to someone in need. So my entire dresser is filled with Bomba socks now over the after finally buying enough over the years. So uh, they're a product that I used happily before they even sponsored the show, and I was thrilled that they did. So, so Ricky for the win. Seal of approval. <laughs> stamp. Uh, Bombas t-shirts are made with thoughtful design features like invisible seams, soft fabrics, and the perfect weight so they hang just right. Bombas underwear has a barely there feel with second skin support that might make you forget that they're even there in a good way. Mm. <laughs> and did you know that <laughs> socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the three most requested clothing items at homeless shelters? That's why Bombas donates one for every item that you buy. Go to bombas.com slash weird and you get 20% off your first purchase. That is B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash weird for 20% off. S stock up, because you only get 20% once, so you're going to want that discount. It's going to be great. Bombas.com slash weird. And now for the weirdest headlines that we've seen this week, starting with Catch the Virus promotion at Washington Bar leads workers to quit, bans to cancel. Hmm. This had the opposite effect of what we thought it would. This is, uh, I, of course, you know, immediate. So they... This bar on Facebook, they're like, come on down, catch the virus. <laughs> Wouldn't they, we don't give a fuck down here. <laughs> and their workers are like, uh, so you just invited the worst people in the local You know community. exactly who's going to come, you are, right? you are marketing uh, your business to just the worst people in society. And uh, I don't know, as someone making fucking jack shit money at your restaurant, uh, I, you know, I, I think I'll probably just not come in yeah. anymore. And then like, it's a venue. Bands were like, yeah, I don't want to play at a place full of uh, fucking COVID coffers. That's so the thing I'm is good. like you're already technically at risk for just working at a public facing scenario. Yeah. But like putting this out there is asking for the, the, the just the worst, most entitled assholes yeah. to come and uh, enjoy the business. So they made the post and the workers are like, OK, well, uh and the, and the bands like, okay, well, we're just not going to come. And then, of course, like clockwork, I'm being canceled. People are trying to cancel my bar. It's like, no, you oh. just, uh, you changed your marketing and it, it didn't go over well with everyone. But uh, I'm sure you're going to get just as many fucking psychos coming in uh, who like eat their boogers and shit. Yeah. It's like right now you could, you can absolutely 100% go down to Tin Horn Flats and grab a stool right now, right? No. Nope. No. They no. went out of business <laughs> because uh, because they, yeah, this local Burbank uh, restaurant, they, they... Bar, a saloon. Yeah. yeah uh, they had overpriced food, too. But yeah. they, they pivoted uh, they pivoted their business during the coronavirus pandemic to illegally being open and just paying the fines every day. And uh, turned out there was not enough customers in favor of their new uh, approach to uh, counterbalance the amount of people in the local community who were absolutely disgusted by this <laughs> and chose to just never patronize the business ever again. Yeah. Funny also, how that works. Uh, yeah, lots of... It turns out uh, when you uh, cater to just being like, hey, everyone who fucking uh, hates this, come down here and I'll hang out. There were just like fights happening all the time. Yeah. It was like insane. Cops were being called numerous times. So they wait, I thought this was anything goes. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty much... no yeah. rules. <laughs> yeah. We're already breaking the law. No mask, no shirt, no yeah. shoes. <laughs> It's all good. Yeah. NYC Mayor Eric Adams says New Yorkers need to stop getting the L's on COVID-19. Eric is your mayor. We're getting W's now. This Eric is a, a blessing. Uh, he, he is the perfect New York mayor. We've said it so many times, but this guy, he's got a beautiful way with words. Yeah. New York, it's time to stop taking COVID L's. Start getting COVID W's. Mm -hmm. Woo! He also uh, had to call the cops on his first... Like within hours of becoming mayor. That's the fun. Yeah, he's up on a bridge. And above. they just keep blasting right by him. Yeah, he's, he's on camera uh, being interviewed on a, a bridge above like uh, L train stop or something like that. And, he uh, started taking W train. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, calls the cops on, 
I can't remember what. There's like an assault happening or yeah. something in front of him, and the mayor. You just see you see the police cars pass by and just like slow down a little bit and then just keep <laughs> on going. He also like hired his own brother for some uh, role that he yeah. wasn't qualified for, and they were like, all right, okay, you, you know what? You, you can can't do it. Pay him. Yeah, you can pay him one dollar a year. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, this is, it's going to be a real uh, uh, a mayoral run, not run. He's already mayor, but uh, an experience that is going to make for some great headlines over the next couple of years. Oh yeah, he's. Uh, He's the best. He's the best that New York... He's exactly what New York City the deserves. The greatest mayor for the greatest city in the world. <laughs> uh, Ted Cruz tweets about rising Cancun flight costs ahead of another Texas winter storm. <laughs> Get it? It's like that thing I did that pissed everyone off. Yeah, the, the morally reprehensible thing that I did. Remember that? Anyways, yeah. I'm joking about it, so it obviously wasn't a big deal. His, also, his tweet was like, he's like, gas prices are going up. Groceries are going up. But you know what else is going up? The price of flights to Cancun. You get it? <laughs> bop, bop, ba, dump, bop. And like, yeah, Texas is on the cusp or yeah, already it, getting hit with another severe winter storm where they, they were showing like uh, the makeshift efforts to like try to protect power plants there. They're like putting up tarps with like what looks like flex tape mm. uh, around it. Uh, and also, Praise be, the Bitcoin miners have slowed their mining in order to save the energy grid. See, I told you all. All I had to do was call up the Bitcoin miners. I would be very interested to see if they run into zero problems thanks to these Bitcoin miners. Yeah, it, uh, I genuinely hope that uh, ERCOT has um, learned some lessons from last year and yeah. weatherproofed their uh, grid a little bit more, but uh, I guess we will see. I mean, how much worse could it be this time? I hope I, I hope everyone's fine. Yeah, it was, I hope nothing it was bad, bad last yeah, time. Exactly. It was uh, like people I knew in Texas. They were they were having a bad go at it. Well, people fucking died. I mean, people literally died. Yeah, it was not good. Uh, and then uh, people were put into financial destitute when uh, everything thawed out and all of their pipes burst. Hey, and... it's me, Gritty, your, your <laughs> local uh, okay. power provider. Oh, by the you way, you owe us ten thousand dollars. Yeah, but not just that. Like people's piping in their houses exploded because it froze, and then like. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, okay, well now I have to replace all the plumbing in my entire apartment or house or whatever. It's like, or or move out while it's being replaced. So. Um, well. Uh... Heavy is the head that wears the crown, and Texas is the king of America. So, yep, it's and it's a it's a cowboy hat, yeah, with, with jewels all around it. It's a very fancy cowboy <laughs> Those hat. Those blue jewels, a ten gallon crown. <laughs> <laughs> Crash suspect says Dale Earnhardt's ghost told him to drive wrong way. All right, I guess. Uh, yeah. So Dale Earnhardt, obviously NASCAR legend. Yeah, tragic. The Intimidator tragically died on the track. Yeah, from a crash. So I, I don't see the logic here of uh, Dale Earnhardt. He is, wasn't driving the wrong way either. He got like yeah, he, he was, was he was protecting his son and another driver for his on his racing team so that they could win. It was like the Daytona 500 or something like that or Pepsi 400, and uh, he was running blocker for him, and he got clipped and went yeah. into the wall. Uh, I know a lot about this because it's one of the only times I ever saw my dad cry, uh, and he hit the he hit the wall and his. You know, the force of his brain hitting his skull. Yeah, it was very tragic. Um, but yeah, this guy was doing this in Las Vegas on like the 215 highway loop. The video is a bit nuts. Like he had a bunch of cars, but like luckily it doesn't sound like anyone was seriously injured. But he was on the freeway on the wrong side. And he said that uh, the ghost of Dale Earnhardt uh, told him that he has to do this to get the mayor's attention. So they'll bring NASCAR back to Vegas because I guess they haven't had a NASCAR race in Vegas. They're in a long doing time. NASCAR in the Coliseum this weekend. Yeah, which is the, the tracks only like I it, it, the thrilling race where the cars will only go forty five miles yeah, an hour. Like <laughs> it, depending how many cars are on it, like it's just going to be a destruction derby. Yeah, it's going to be it's essentially a the last wheel is going to be turned the entire time. <laughs> it's it's a, it's smaller than like a drifting track. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work. I'm gonna watch it out of complete morbid curiosity, because <laughs> um, it, it it's just gonna end up being like the battle royale of NASCAR. Like yeah. whoever's car survives the amount of laps without like spinning out, it should be the winner. Yeah, yeah, that'll be very interesting. But I do have tickets for the Auto Club 400. I got my parking pass in, in the mail Fontana. Today. Yeah, Fontana, yeah. beautiful Fontana with the uh, cliffside waterfalls. People don't people don't know this, but yeah, Southern California has one of the premier NASCAR tracks in the country. 
I wouldn't say premier, but it is <laughs> it is a NASCAR track. It's very big track, yeah. It there's it's not I guess depending where you're sitting, it's pretty because the the mountains are in the background. So I sure, I, I went there for uh, I didn't go to a NASCAR race when I was a kid, but I went to a, it was like funny cars, which are drag racers. Yeah, drag racing, and it is the loudest fucking thing. It shakes I've ever your heard. entire body. The entire parking lot is just alarms going off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they're, those are fun to go to as well. They literally they have to use parachutes to slow them down because they they get going so fast yeah. on the straightaway that like they would crash into the crowd if they didn't have a fucking parachute it is to a, shoot at. It is adorable hearing you talk about this. This is my entire youth. I, I went to drag races like multiple times a month. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I did it once. It was, uh, it was very loud. Yeah. It's, it all, it's, it's very cool. You should go once in your life. Everyone should go once. Yeah. You should Same with NASCAR. NASCAR looks boring on TV. When you're there, it flies by. So loud and fast. You're just like, <laughs> yay. Look at them. Look at them go. Yeah. Much more intense. Arcade previously attacked by axe-wielding man, now crashed into by SUV. The sea cave cannot catch a break. Yeah, we talked about, uh, yeah. I believe he, he called himself the wolf. He destroyed. They're, he was just being a weirdo. And they're like, yeah. you gotta go. And he's like, no. And they're like, I'll show you how weird I can be. And he came back and destroyed the like just every arcade cabinet, broke every window there. The community came together, crowdfunded the repairs. They were back open within a week. And then, I guess this happened, like, not even that long after it. Was it the axe-wielding guy that was in the SUV? No, it was just... Heard you guys were trafficking humans in here. It was just some Final Destination shit for mm. this bar. Uh, a, a, a car crashed into the wall and, like, injured two people no! who were standing right next to it. Oh, God. And now... Uh, yeah, they took out an entire wall. It's like, oh, you got, did you enjoy replacing all your windows and shit? Well, now you got a fucking, you got structural damage now, bitch. Imagine being like this co this company's like insurance company. Like, guys, <laughs> what are you telling me happened? Sorry, what? And this is the sea cave. You, you were t you were on the phone with us just a few days ago, right? About like, even your... if you crowdfund your way back into business again, which I'm sure they did, this sounds like a place that people really love loved going to. Like, yeah, I I would even be cautious about going back. Be like, look, I love this place. I love a good barcade, arcade. Danger is attracted to this building. Yeah, it's like a supernatural a uh, magnet for chaos. Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's the Yevla goat of Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a tradition. Uh, we destroy the Sea Cave Arcade. Yeah. It's just what we do around here. Sometimes we crash cars into it. Sometimes we take an axe to it. Yeah. Sometimes we burn it down. Who knows? They always come back with a new one. New Jersey Town's famous groundhog, Milltown Mel, dies days before big event. Winter will now last forever. Nuclear winter. Nuclear winter. There will be thousand years of winter. It's gonna like it's, Game of Thrones winter. I, tell me they found it dead on the day they were supposed to pull it out. Oh no, no he's look, dead. He's been dead oh, for days. Oh jeez. <laughs> Well, what does that mean? Look at the groundhog. Like, what does it mean if you pull him out and he's just limp and dead? <laughs> you pull the groundhog out and it's just like bottom half of its body just falls off. Oh, God. Well, this has been rotting for days. That can't be good for the weather. <laughs> oh, is this acid rain? I was, the Groundhog Day is like something you kind of just take for granted. It's like, oh, that's the thing people do. But it yeah. is a very strange tradition. Like, where did that come from? I don't Who's know. Whose idea was this shit? It's like a, you know, it's a fun thing, I guess. Yeah. It's, also, it's one of my favorite movies of all time, Groundhog yeah. Day. And the, the main Classic. one, uh, they replaced Punks of Tony Phil, Yeah, right? I mean, I don't know if they ever officially replaced him. <laughs> well, but, uh, but how yes. old do Groundhogs live to? Obviously, there's been a whole... Uh, it's like the Dread Pirate Roberts. There's, yeah. uh, you know, Punks of Tony Phil can't die because there's an unlimited number of Punks of Tony Phil's. Yeah, and then like the guy that dresses like the Monopoly man that pulls him out, yeah. he's got to be have been replaced a couple times by now, too. Sure, but not officially. <laughs> <laughs> Officially, he is 200 years old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, yeah, he, he, he saw his shadow. So uh, it's going to be a long winter. What does that mean? going to be a long winter. I don't know how they can tell if the groundhog sees its shadow or not. Well, it's if it casts a shadow. Just like, but that's like if it's a cloudy day, then it's like, well, yeah, there's going to be more winter. There's a, but if it doesn't see its shadow, then that means a short winter, an early spring. So I don't know. Look, none of this is science based. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Well, they sent uh, Phil Connors, the weatherman, down to Punxsutawney to report yeah, on it. Yeah, because it's so. a fun, feel-good story. It's like one of the last things we have. And yeah. of course, like I'm sure, 
if you looked into it, like PETA's probably protested this or something. This is abuse. Yeah. The groundhogs That belong. groundhog's living better than any it's groundhog in the name. A groundhog lives in the ground. That's yeah. where it belongs. Not in a box to be pulled out once a year. Like a freak. Yeah. To predict weather. It doesn't even work. <laughs> You'll see this chart. The, the groundhog, no better than a coin toss. Yeah. He's like Jim Cramer. Yeah. Rarely gets it right. <laughs> Massive brawl at Pennsylvania Golden Corral involving 40 people erupts over steak. I've never been to a Golden Corral. Really? Yeah, and I thought it was just like an East Coast thing, but there are... No, there's, they're on the West Coast. Yeah, there's, uh, there's none in like LA proper, but LA County on the outskirts has like a bunch of them. Yeah, I've, I've been. never been. Is it's, it like uh, the Soup Plantation? <laughs> well, great name. <laughs> can't, can't imagine why the Soup Plantation went out of business. Which is weird because on the East Coast, Soup Plantation was called Sweet Tomatoes, which is a fine name. Yeah. With no negative connotations. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, Golden Corral is just, it, it's like if, it's like a, if Universal Studios designed a buffet. Okay. It's like the signs are all big and it's like, oh, hey, look, this is fancy, right? Uh, so it's like an evening out with the family. But it's, but yeah, you're going to get, you know, the, it's when it comes to like the higher end stuff like steak, it goes quick. It's like when a, if a seafood buffet brings out crab legs, then everyone's just going to oh, yeah, go yeah. take all the crab legs. Yeah. So when the steak comes out, people are like hovering. People are hovering for the steak because, yeah, you can go get a bunch of fried chicken or like, yeah, like, sure. Whatever. Spaghetti. Oh, yeah. You want spaghetti? And Is the steak even good? This is buffet steak we're talking about. I mean, when you're eating a Golden Corral, I mean, steak, steak is going to probably be the highest class thing you can get on the menu. Well, yeah, I guess this place in Pennsylvania, they ran out of steak, like yeah. fully ran out, and it caused pandemonium. There were people throwing chairs at each other. Yeah, because someone will take, like, uh, there would be plenty if everyone just had, you know, one slice, but you're in there, you got your spot, you're going to... Yeah. But some of them, I can't remember, it's been years since I've been to them, but some of them would have, like, a carver guy. Yeah. He, he distributes the steak. Yes, fairly and evenly. Yeah. And then you got all these kids with a cone this big at the yeah. yogurt machine. What are you doing? Get out of here. Kids just getting their grubby little fingers on all the desserts. That's, that's one yeah. thing that the year 2020 has will have changed my life. I will never in my life ever eat at a buffet again. Yeah. Just like I was, I'm just so hyper aware of germs and everything now. Like I can hear a cough from across the Target or the Walmart. Yeah. This is like. Someone in here is fucking sick, and they shouldn't be out in public. My COVID sense is tingling. <laughs> but like a buffet, I couldn't even imagine like looking at someone leering over like open food. Yeah. In fact, I saw it. People I, are disgusting. Yeah. Even, even at like uh, even like the soup buffet at like the supermarket. Every year, there's some viral post of someone, some old man using the ladle <laughs> yeah, and just take a little sampling sip. it. Yeah. 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 It's uh, you know that's one of those things where it's just like. No thanks. The only time I've even eaten in buffets in like 20 years have all been in Las Vegas. And even then, it's it always like, buffet is a, a brilliant marketing thing. Because you look at it, you're like, oh my god, so much to try. But like, you're one a, plate, you're you're a like, human being, you have one plate, and you're like, well, I'm fucking full. Like, I guess I could force myself to eat more of the, the fucking crab legs or whatever. But like, my body is saying no. And also, I'm trying to get out to the pool. I yep, feel bloated yeah. as fuck right now. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, you're in Vegas on like vacation. Like, I had... Growing up, we'd have uh, what was great, Shoney's Breakfast Buffet, delicious. Yeah. Which I, I'm only familiar with from uh, Rick and Morty. And, Never been to a Shoney's. And uh, pizza buffets, like CeCe's. Back then, it was like $5 for the CeCe's Pizza Buffet. And it was like, you know, I was a teenager. It was like five bucks and I can eat all, like, all I want. Great. And we would fill up uh, uh, Ziploc bags in our backpacks yeah. with breadsticks and slices of pizza. Breaking all the rules. You've broken the cardinal rule of buffets, sir. What's in the bag? They, they used to just leave out at this one pizza buffet an entire thing of like marinara sauce. And I would just take the pizza and just pour it all over the pizza. <laughs> Get uh. wild with it. Uh, anyways, enough buffet talk. Giant bunny loses to competitive eater in rabbit versus human salad showdown. See? Yeah, it happens in front of the Glendale Chop Stop location right next to the Rite Aid. Yeah. And uh, you're not going to believe this. Uh, the professional eater, I mean, she she finished like four pounds of salad in under 10 minutes. The giant rabbit, surrounded by cameras and onlookers, did not touch the salad. Wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. The, the, it was it, probably freaked out by the owner. The owner was like trying to hand feed it, and the, the rabbit's just like, no, I don't want this. The owner even brought a backup rabbit who also didn't want any of the salad. Uh, that is a. Uh, so it was a TKO. This is a, that's a striking indictment of the quality. Yeah, I know. It's like, like the worst marketing possible. Because their their whole marketing around not even this, a rabbit would eat it. Yeah, the, the the thing the marketing around this uh, this 
this fight was, uh, oh, people say salad's just rabbit food. We're going to find out if it's actually human food. And it's like, <laughs> turns out rabbits want nothing to do with this Chop Stop salad. Yeah. It is alien to them. Yeah. They want none of it. What a terrible way for this marketing to blow up in their face. Not a ringing endorsement at all. No. So, uh, looks like that failed. Yeah, it, it, it's like, uh, you know, I, if you're a messy person and you notice that uh, food that's been sitting out for a day or so has no insects, uh, that even the bugs don't want it. Mm-hmm. Usually a bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. The rabbits don't want anything to do with the salad. And uh. final headline... LGBTQ book ban proponent faces felony child molestation charge in Missouri. The guy's telling us that these books are putting inappropriate sexual thoughts into our children's minds. It's basically, having a kid read this is like basically like giving pornography to a child. One of those people uh, literally gave pornography to a child and molested several children. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. It's like they're projecting. Almost. Uh, but yeah, we covered a lot of the book ban stuff uh, yeah. in uh, the most recent episode of News Dump, which you can watch. The links will be up in a second. But like, uh, yeah, when I was, I, I like wrote that part of the script. And then when I was home editing it, I was like looking up uh, like B-roll and articles to put in it. And like this came up immediately. And I was like, wait, hold on. This story just got even crazier. Yeah. So like, come on. Like, oh, it's the perfect cover. They'll never out me for my sex crimes mm-hmm. if I just accuse everyone else of sex crimes. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, if you want to watch that episode, it's up here now. Uh, it's all about Whoopsie Goldberg and uh, the actual more <laughs> important topic of uh, banning and burning books. Yeah. Uh, and then we also have another episode of uh, Tech News Day where we uh, talk more about uh, NFTs. But luckily, Kanye West came out and said, no fucking The things. worst person you know just made a great point. And he's actually very concerned about his daughter's use of TikTok. But we're not worried about your use of TikTok. Follow our TikTok channel <laughs> at Internet Today TV. If you want shorter clips from the show, there's some over there to check out. Watch our videos, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.